Uh, where do you guys want to start? Where do you guys want to start? Uh, what can we all agree on was universally bad. <laughs> and then we'll start there and we'll get into the contentious stuff. In an obvious <laughs> angle, after. listen, it is obviously like almost like a, the joke is it's like fucking speed down. It's because TSM. Yeah, I guess the FTX That's stuff. Cool. I mean, start with a yeah, why not? with a whopper. It's yeah, big. No, right. no, 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 no. Yeah, it, the FTX class wasn't universally bad. It meant that TSM didn't get a lot of money. So I'm going to take mm. that this is a good thing. This is actually a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I would come along for that ride with you if it wasn't for the fact that they defrauded all of their customers. Yeah, there was all those people who probably jumped out of buildings, like, you know, the button <laughs> juice or whatever. <laughs> and then it's not, it's, not to say, the it's, mostly, it's mostly bad. It's yeah. mostly bad. For, for the average consumer investor, it's terrible. For my enjoyment of watching TSM not get that money, it's fabulous. Yeah, th th now that I will. Uh, I, can, I can share uh, an agreement with that one. I mean, the thing is with the FTX sponsorship, I mean, you sort of have to like, just, it was just a colossal shit show from start to finish. Um, you know, for those that don't know, just to like lay the table with a few little details. Obviously, um, you know, it's esports, so every potential fucking grift or hustle or, you know, weird sponsor that's out there, everyone wants a piece of it. Then you have FTX suddenly emerging as this like super credible uh exchange uh but it's you know it's all propped up by like vc and investment money essentially and they've got way more celebrity endorsements than probably a legit company ever actually needs right including like weird ones like larry david <laughs> like when i think about the cutting edge of those ads were actually really good though they were really yeah, well made ads they were yeah of... but, but but still the irony like, of, of all... course being that there should just be curb your enthusiasm music playing right now yeah, followed exactly. by everything else in their history they, did. they sort of set that one up yeah so so there was that but anyway then obviously they started um coming into we sports by all accounts sam bankman freed is a big league of legends uh fan something that did Riot you see that longer. stat mate this is one thing where it was so niche as an overlap a lot of people didn't notice yeah. this one of the most surreal moments of all that stuff getting exposed about that guy was where someone just put that detail that he'd played thousands of games of league of legends and was stocking like bronze or something mental, still like, bronze, yeah yeah they, like like so the joke is he's like even provably just dog shit at games as well like no, but it's what I mean. It's like they're trying, they tried to portray him as some kind of like savant, right? Because it was like, oh, he was doing all these like high level business meetings while he was like playing League of Legends and making all these problems. Yeah, he's in fucking bronze. He's not even in the average percentile. He's below fucking average. Like, why yeah, is this I'm pretty sure. Him or your game? I forget what rank, but I know in League of Legends, literally, there was actually one of those guys who was a streamer who has like no arms who was in like plat or fucking masters or something. Mm. It's like, yeah, exactly. Mm. This guy is. He's not some like super genius guys. He isn't. He's just an idiot in bronze. Yeah. So anyway, um, he, they he, because of his interest in the game, uh, naturally he sort of started wanting to put some money into the esports space. He was very uh, au fait with who TSM are. You know the Forbes valued <laughs> most valuable org in the world, and uh, wanted to put. And he agreed a ten year deal, which was twenty one million dollars per year for 10 years for the naming rights he also put 3.2 million into furia but anyway while that deal was going ahead riot games turned around and said oh we're gonna have to review this because our policies don't allow crypto sponsors because it's a volatile space we can't really vet it uh, the money might not be legitimate we like to make sure we keep a good accounting of all of our partnered leagues and tsm are like this is an outrage how can you stop this is the biggest sponsorship deal in our history then just shortly after that about a month uh Riot Games announced the new title sponsor for the league, FTX, in what was Riot's biggest deal, 96 million we now know from court documents. Interestingly enough, Riot Games refused to be transparent and disclose it. I wonder why, perhaps getting half as much as a team within your league for the league itself. Not great optics, almost like you might have a shit product in LCS. Uh, so yeah, jump in. I was gonna say, all, they did say it was their biggest sponsorship of all yes. time. And, but they um, didn't give the specific number. Which obviously was made me deeply curious because I follow, you know, all these stories of sponsorships. And, it, you know, you think about the deliverables that they had as well, which is that they have the FTX logo on screen at all times. Whenever, you know, the casters are constantly talking about the, the FTX gold advantage. So it's this built so into good. the commentary now. Uh, it was actually, you know, as a fan... 
it was a great feature. Uh, was, I enjoyed yeah, having this in- within the game. And we didn't have it in other leagues, which is lame. Like, it's the same thing that Riot does with MasterCard at the international tournaments, which is that they have an alert on the screen when a mythic item, the first mythic item of of every, well, the only mythic item, I should say, of every individual character, you know, player is bought, which is actually very useful for tracking power spikes and timings. And I just wish we could have these features regardless of whether there was a sponsor, because it's like they're gatekeeping information from the viewer, unless a corporation is willing to pay to unlock that for us, the fans, which I think is a very weird thing to do. That is going to be amazing, though, because what I love is thinking of someone going back and watching a VOD like five years from now, because that's going to be like if you could watch like an old VOD in esports. It was like, and now over to the Enron analysis desk, because you want to know the score with the money. You know, like, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it, if that was like a real, that's going to be, that's how memeable esports is now. We are part of the memes. Because the other thing, I agree, by the way, the hilarious part about that is it's simultaneously Riot themselves who've been, remember the whole thing Riot does from day one is they set a fake press precedent that doesn't have to exist then tell everyone well you have to exist within this precedent because it exists and then later just go we're just going to remove that actually completely it's like, what why are we doing so if people don't know way back in the day one of the first stories i remember that we actually broke it on gamers when that site began was that mad thing where for real not only did riot in the early days try to make it that you weren't allowed to have a Dota two team on the same brand but yeah. they were even going to do in the first lcs contracts this clause where your pro players wouldn't even be allowed to stream any game other than league of of legends like yeah. riots always done this thing where they push over and then the same season people remember first ever lcs split was the tsm snapdragon split with the game crib yeah. sponsorship mm-hmm. now did riot go brilliant someone wants to sponsor a team in the first ever split of league of legends that's basically our dream to elevate the industry no they actually tried to get that shut down and believe it or not even and this just shows you how back then esports is very different even the other orgs that weren't involved in that sponsorship deal were like look just as like a president we cannot allow this to happen and like we all have to come together and tell Riot like you have to let them have that sponsorship how else are we going to ever make money off League of Legends basically so the joke is you fast forward and as you say they set it up as though like oh trying to bring crypto into our pristine beautiful idyllic game League of Legends for, filled with children by the way I'm so tired of the angle every time someone wants to do something politically whack being like you're trying to do stuff for children and then the next week you just announce a deal too so by that logic you wanted to sell crypto to children no of course you didn't it's just a whack angle to tell your opponent doing so they did that they were sort of like wow I don't know if we can allow just teams to be in and then the joke is yes they just in the meantime negotiated their own deal and were like because that's the thing. I've always just seen Riot. This is why I can understand Riot. I see Riot as some, like, shit Boardwalk Empire character who's like, let me get a taste. What's going on here? Like, adding my cut. Like, just some shit mobster. Not even a good one, just a rubbish one. Just to, just walk them down. So, in this scenario, like, Riot just made themselves look like fools. And then, obviously, this is the best part of all. The most succulent part. It would have only been TSM going down with this ship. But, no. You had to put it on your fucking masthead, essentially, of your whole league. And as we're just saying here, here's the other thing people might not realize as well. It's like, if League of Legends was going on now, like, if LCS, you know, ended at Christmas, remember, like, the NBA has Christmas games and stuff, the joke is, right now, they'd probably still have to be saying, like, the FTX gold advantage, even as cognitive dissonance would be kicking in. Like, wait a minute, isn't that that thing in the news? Like, that's the world of League of Legends now, guys. So good job, Riot. Well done on that one. I want to hear on. your take, Rich, on this. Yeah, go on, Rich. Jump in. Uh, I mean, uh, if any of you are wondering, by the way, what you know your average FTX victim might look like, this guy. Because I also actually was one Jesus. of the people who unknowingly invested kind of in FTX because I, oh, I, I no. did loads of fucking stupid crypto speculative stuff like, you know, one in a hundred. Yeah, but if it hits, it hits kind of bullshit. So I invested in this little metaverse project. I'm not even going to say the name for two reasons. One, because it's now embarrassing in hindsight. And two, I don't want to promote it if it even does still exist, although I'm pretty sure it was just a rug pull. Anyway, your boy invests. Little do I know that actually the umbrella investor that's like putting their money behind the project is actually owned by FTX. And I put, not only did I put money into the coin for this metaverse project, I, yes, I bought virtual land in the same project (laughs) and a lot of virtual land. So, you know, that's my crypto faux pas out the way. 
obviously, uh, holistically. I'm glad that he did say it like that, though. That made it funny. Like, you didn't just buy <laughs> land, but you drank a lot of land. Like, you were <laughs> yeah, some mad plantation. Huge crack of land. I fucked myself, but I did it big, big time. Yeah, good what's, job. What's brilliant is that it was such a rug pull that now if I go into my wallet where the land which was set up as NFTs now sits, all you see is these abstract coordinates without any graphics or anything because they just pulled all the data from the project. So I've oh, literally no. got X176, uh, Y238 sat as a blank NFT in my fucking uh, wallet, which I <laughs> paid <laughs> several thousand for. Anyway, in terms of like this whole mess, like holistically, what... One of the riot sort of things that I always assumed was a line was a myth was that LEC and LCS were like separate projects run by separate people. And don't worry, if you buy into LEC, we're not going to prioritize NA. And these are two separate things. And we're always like, bullshit. You're always going to uh, prioritize the American project. We're always going to be second fiddle. Actually, I think ever since franchising has happened, that's proven to not be correct. And yeah. that my assumption was actually wrong. And they are two very distinct products. One yes. which is run generally pretty well by John Needham and the bunch of people who, who run it in e EU. And then an absolute fucking shit show, which is NALCS, which, you know, we'll touch on more of uh, their latest uh, faux pas as well later, I'm sure. And how they're run. And obviously FTX, which again, I'm just glad that EU didn't touch this shit. Because realistically now, in like 2022, it shouldn't actually make any odds from FTX's perspective if they invest in EU or NA, or it shouldn't be that big a deal other than like the logistics of in-person meetings that all NA orgs like to cosplay, right? And spend loads of unnecessary money on. It shouldn't make any difference. EU has a huge English language broadcast. Obviously, it has side broadcasts, but they're completely secondary. It's now the more valuable product, right? Like way more people watch EU than they watch NA. So I'm actually glad that EU just dodged this bullet. That's like my biggest, mm. most thankful takeaway from the whole thing. And what I think it kind of spells uh, is bad news in general, looking into the short and midterm future for LCS, because I do see this as now a completely separate, like island, if you like, of a product in the West where it's just going to continue trending downhill. And I think decision after decision, that, I mean, it's one thing if Reggie and his fucking meatheads make a terrible decision and go in with a huge speculative long term deal with a sponsorship, right? That's one team. And even then, because of the brand size and everything, they can survive it. It's not going to be on their side where the contract is infringed upon, right? If anything, it's going to be FTX and they'll probably get out of it without being too heavily scarred. That's one thing. But for the yeah. whole league, as you said, to like put this as your banner head and then the whole fucking ship sinks and you're still attached to it. I mean, it doesn't get worse, worse than this optically. And Riot should be lucky that their business is segregated, how it's segregated now across multiple regions. Because imagine if it was just LCS or imagine if... By the way, what the fans wish for, keep in mind, I've got a pretty long memory when it comes to esports and people were baying for there to be a merge between EU and NA. And yes. where was that going to be hosted? In NA. And who was yeah. going to run it? The NA team. So thank your fucking lucky stars that none of you plebs actually have a say at the table because that would be a fucking disaster. My goodness. Yeah, I do want to talk a little bit about this FTX deal before we bridge it into some of the LCS stuff because they are going to be very connected when we start digging into the business end of things and what this means. So first off, how we know this information now about this $96 million deal that started in August, I believe, the summer, which was July or August of 2021, where they made an announcement and then they basically said, oh, the next week we're going to have this FTX sponsorship continued through this year, was that there was a court filing, which was a motion to compel by Riot's lawyers, trying to get out of this deal. So- mm -hmm. Is this necessary? I think they're just doing their legal due diligence because obviously FTX is like has no money to fight them and they are in material breach of the contract because they haven't made their payments. So I think this is just kind of to cover their ass, asking the court to nullify the deal for all these reasons. But this document, which we'll link below, ends up being hilarious guys. yeah absolutely it's so funny because the the deal escalated over time so it got bigger and bigger and bigger through 2028 but we don't know how much money they got in 2021 because it was part of a year i would expect they probably got i don't know 
three, four million dollars, something like that. But then they were supposed to get uh, $12 million for the sponsorship for the entirety of LCS this year. They only received the first payment of $6.25 million. And they say in this legal document that they're still owed the other $6.25 million. And then they say the rest of the deal is worth $70 million from this point, from like 2023 onward. So there's like a huge amount of money that was going to be missing here. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, Riot got played, et cetera, et cetera. First off, the industry thought, including ma major VC firms, thought that FTX was an upstanding business. OK, so mm -hmm. they were considered one of the more reputable crypto exchanges by most people. Right. Uh, up until the very end when they the emperor had no clothes. Right. Mm -hmm. So. You don't blame them for taking this money. And again, it was the biggest sponsorship in LCS history. Why the fuck wouldn't Riot take this deal if you're operating this league? Now, the problem with them taking this deal is that now they have a $12 million hole in their budget because they were anticipating having this money coming in for yeah. until 2028. Now, they probably, if I had to guess, they probably weren't super aggressive about this because I think any sponsorship you take in this space, you you kind of have to expect that maybe you're going to lose it. Um, and they may have renegotiated the deal after the crypto market fell out earlier this year. That happened uh, with a lot of these sponsorships across traditional sports, across esports. You know, the crypto sponsors who were splashing out once the market crashed came back and said, we need to revisit the terms of this deal. So it may have gotten smaller. We, we don't really know uh, is the point. So yeah, but the, here's the issue, guys. As as it comes to LCS, there was a lot of value for this FTX deal because, as people have already said, FTX is a global brand that people from all over the world can buy into or or, or use the exchange for, right? Which means that when you have global viewership, which we'll get to about who's going to be watching LCS, it becomes very valuable to them because they can go and say. 100% of our audience has access to our product or whatever. 80% of our audience has access to your product. If half your audience is European or more than half, as is implied, by the yeah. way, by the schedule change, it becomes really difficult to sell American-focused sponsors that don't have businesses outside of America, which is the core long-term issue that they're going to face with the schedule changes to LCS. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah, so I mean, I is, think... Sorry, I was just going to say, I think this is part of like a problem with Riot that like it's been very uh, present, um, but no one really picks up on it or talks about it, that the American office has probably mishandled every major sponsorship it had, it's ever had in some in some way or another. They have bungled a lot of sponsorships. Like I know a lot of stuff from talking to people uh, behind the scenes, like uh, apparently there was like one year, uh, I can't remember the exact year because it's a long time ago, but you know, they had Coca-Cola as a sponsorship. They didn't really understand how to do like activations or anything. And then next year they didn't. And then it was like they then coke came back with like coke zero or something and you know it was like there was a lot of people behind the scenes i even you know had sources that had uh you know from the coke side of the deal that were like saying like these these guys were like just clueless like to what a high level sponsorship deal looks like they were like offering us a fucking logo being present on screen we're fucking coca-cola we're like one of the most identifiable brands to ever exist we're a trivial fucking pursuit question for fuck's sake so there was that but i mean this this deal you know i i've got to believe it was driven by almost like a malicious intent towards tsm i mean everybody knows behind the scenes there has been a lot of friction with tsm and riot league ops you know going all the way back to mark love merrill saying love me some reggie exactly but but this it, it's been a lot more fractious and I, and I wanted to get your guys's aficionados on the space i wanted to get your take on this because remember you know, the way that they got this sponsorship, TSM laid all the groundwork. It was going to be a TSM deal, uh, you know, exclusive. Riot got wind of it because obviously you have to disclose who your sponsor is going to be and, you know, what deals are going on. And then essentially, I, I believe, wanted to take it entirely for themselves, which is why they were intimating to TSM. They would put, uh, they would stymie the deal. And obviously, I've done reporting this year, which you can't read on the subreddit, of course. Uh, so not a lot of people have seen it. But TSM, 
them were looking at selling their LCS slot this year and buying, I think it was Heretics potentially in LEC. They, yeah. Yeah. The, so, what so when, when you, yeah. 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 The, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so when you when you when you look at this, um, you know, it's it's hard not to believe that like what Riot have done here was predicated on some form of malice because it, it, it's just there's just too many little coincidental strands, you know, like as to why they've gone after this deal specifically. So I don't know if you guys think there's yeah. any of that going on. I think I think so because you know when when TSM announced this like. Riot immediately started blocking them from calling themselves TSM FTX and League of Legends. They started controlling how FTX could be used with the League of Legends players that they had. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, I mean, this is actually Riot's, uh, Riot's stance towards crypto. Actually, this is going to be very interesting to people. Actually pushed a lot of teams to enter into Dota and CSGO because they had to deploy that money somewhere. And the only place crypto companies could get value because of Activision yep. Blizzard and because of Riot was to purchase Dota and CSGO teams. So in a way, their insistence on limiting this market actually started feeding more money into their competitors, which is pretty wild. It's pretty wild. And this, um, this is a trend as well that you will see. It has never really truly manifested purely because of like timeline things, but Riot's persistence or insistence rather on like absolute blanket banning on any kind of like draft king sponsorship betting or whatever that for a time did manifest right because when csgo was going for its big boom go and watch some of those tier two especially like tier two tier three uh csgo games that were going on the viewership was mental and it was all because of the betting and the skins and you know people love that so riot has had a pattern of doing this consistently of like accidentally driving viewership to their competitors because of their stance on this kind of stuff. By yeah. the way, the other thing I would also mention, just because I just found this hilarious, is that when they made these deals into areas, which I agree, look, oh, let's be real, everyone can now claim, like, it was obvious, no, actually, FTX was one of the most famous exchanges in the entire world. Like, essentially, unless you had inside information, your only reason to be like, you'll fail is if you just think crypto entirely was going to fail. Like, nobody actually really did have, like, the advance warning. Like, it, if you were going to make a deal, this is a company you'd make a deal with. But the thing I found humorous was, especially from TSM's position, when TSM announced the deal, it was some like God tier. Oh my God, we've revolutionized it. And then when they found out that they're not going to get the money now, they had the gall to actually put a statement out where they tried to imply like it wasn't a big deal that they'd lost this money. Now that is that is so fucking transparently disingenuous. And so similarly with riots, like to me, this is egg on their face again. I mean, I know it segues into an old topic, which is this reminds me of that like M bam thing where they had the baseball thing M and they were like, oh, this yeah. is worth yeah. this is loads of money and it's going to change it. And that never even happened if people don't so, know like it just I, I brought, the years. I brought that story yeah i brought yeah. the story of that deal so so what happened guys is like the money mirages that riot has had the even bigger one was that what was it 2015 2016 somewhere in there riot announced so major league baseball so it had this platform called bam tech ml bam tech basically and they bought for this was publicly reported a 300 million dollar media rights deal because Bamtech was basically it was a media platform like this is Twitch. before Overwatch League remember so this is an enormous deal yeah huge 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 so what happened is like I think it was it was affiliated with ESPN and Disney and Disney ended up buying the platform and then the deal was nullified now we don't know if Riot got any of that money they might have gotten some of it but the point is, is that we were waiting for years. It was like, oh, they bought the media rights. It's going to be exclusive potentially on this platform. And then nothing happened. And then nothing yep. happened. And then nothing happened. And then nothing happened. And then just quietly died. And so they keep making these announcements. Oh, we got the biggest deal in LCS history. Oh, we have this huge media rights deal. But nothing ever fucking happens. The money doesn't show up. And like people are like, oh, they probably got the full value of that deal. There is no way in hell that they mm -hmm. got $300 million for free, guys. Like, Disney lawyers, hello? <laughs> Disney probably has more lawyers than Riot has employees. Like, no, that didn't Well, I, I can tell you as well that as as uh, part of the teams and being in those meetings, part of the BAMTEC deal was that the teams were going to directly benefit from said deal and yeah. no team ever got a penny from anything. And that was, I believe, based on a percentage 
of uh, the deal, right? So if we get 0%, I guess Riot got 0% as well. Like, I, I, there's nothing that's happened that leads me to believe they got a penny from that deal. And I remember as well, in the meetings, like, shortly before it was meant to happen, because Riot did what they always do, which is hire, like, some ex-traditional sports guru or whatever to run a particular project. And they brought in this guy who's either from the NHL or, or something um from from america who got everyone in a room and was talking about the bam tech deal and even then it sounded like really sussy not like that you know there was some scam or something going on but everything was always stated in such uncertain terms it's like should it should it happen x will then happen blah 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 and we're all sat there like hang on this is this deal's done right like what do we what what's with the ifs the buts and the maybes and then also there was never really like any kind of denouement or like debrief as to why it didn't happen it was just like People stopped talking about it. Riot just stopped talking about it. And then when it was brought up again, it was like, well, we did say, you know, maybe or it should this happen. We never they publicly the announced right. this. They publicly yeah. fucking announced so, the deal. They publicly announced the deal uh, after, after I leaked it. They said it was a game changer for the sport. That's a direct quote from Riot. Yeah. The, 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 I remember knowing the point at which I was like, okay, this is really sus, is when someone was trying to ask them to like, clear up what they mean by ex exclusive or whatever and they're like whoa, 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 whoa we're not it's not necessarily exclusive i'm like what yeah. like everything we've read is like the base terms of the deal including exclusivity etc now you're saying it might not be like what the fuck are we doing here so that's why that's why you, that's why you know by the way that riot are incompetent on some level when it comes to yep. these business deals because they really think in that scenario right i remember that exact angle you just brought up there rich that that was something they even claimed so they were pretending by the way that in an era years we're talking like maybe like four, three years before that overwatch league deal which even then we all know is a sweetheart like fucking behind the seals i pack your back you pack my that was like that's the only reason that deal was that high we riot put, thought they could publicly say by the way guys we've signed like the greatest deal ever times 10 and also you don't even get anything exclusive lol we've played them and then nothing manifests it's like in that case, you never had anything, you morons. Like, I don't know what you even think you negotiated there. I remember yeah. even hearing that detail and being like, that actually is bad, though. That actually sets the whole precedent we're all waiting for. Of you sell the media rights back. like Because if anything, what it sounded like you were trying to do was just con some baseball fucking tech to be like, look, you can have it on your platform, not exclusively, and then maybe it'll do great. Like, like I, what I don't get about that is that that was almost like Riot were like, like looking at us going, lol, you won't believe this, I'm going to con this massive company in was shit deal because think about it logically if it's not exclusive how could they ever if this deal had gone forward in good faith how could they ever have gotten viewership on that platform like it, yeah. it just wouldn't well, it would have been on twitch wouldn't it so what a, even the premise was flawed but riot would brag about that like what so uh, what i what i heard happened was and why the deal ended up stalling right so when i when i broke the story the, uh, the original number getting bounced around was 200 million uh dollars for two years of uh, of exclusive content uh, right by the time the negotiations continued and riot made the announcement in 2016 like month after i think i broke the story uh, after it had been picked up by some of the outlets uh the, the deal they announced was 350 million dollars right now that was an increase based on what i'd seen so negotiations were obviously still ongoing so what had happened is there'd been an upsell there right now that upsell was uh, <laughs> they they made an app I've, I've still got the fucking prototype of the app i've still got it right i can look i've got a little play along of how it all works and what pops up and everything like a video of it right so they, what was meant to be happening was they said they were going to put exclusive matches, competitions, or, or you could only watch it through the app. That was the whole purpose of the deal. They rolled that out. They told owners that was how it was going to be. I even know some owners had some concerns because they were like, well, if this limits viewership, it can potentially hurt our popularity and our business deals. But at least we're going to get a big fat cut of all this media money. So maybe that'll offset it. But the concerns were raised. And then radio silence because I think they wanted to walk back what they'd given away. This is what I mean about them being fucking incompetent. It's like... If someone is paying you 350 million fucking dollars to put your content on their platform, guess fucking what? They don't want it for free on another fucking platform. That's the point. 
So this is what I mean. Like every major sponsorship deal they've had, they've bungled or botched in some fucking way in in the American League. Meanwhile, LEC seems to be, by contrast, a relatively sustainable ecosystem without any like sponsor dramas or you know unethical sponsors potentially coming in or whatever. Uh, by yeah, the way, I mean, worth if... mentioning. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, worth go, go, mentioning go, go. that at that point in time, which I believe was 2016, when the whole Bamtech thing was happening, that was still when Riot Central was dealing with everything, at least with like these global things, or whatever. So basically, we got sent over some fucking moron on a plane who was from Riot NA who was selling us this dream. It wasn't like LEC at that point. So when we were all sat there going like, what the fuck's going on? And by the way, this number that Richard's quoted changed constantly. <laughs> yeah. We were told, our last meeting, we were told 50 million and we're not given a time frame for that. Like literally, well, over how many years? 50 million. Like un unironically, that was the last we heard of it. The number was now 50 million. And I think they'd moved to like a smaller timeline model where it's like, mm, we're going to do like a two, three year thing and as like a feeler and then go from there. And then we never heard of it. But yeah, worth yeah. mentioning that that was before like uh, EU hired their own people and made their own team in Europe. So that was like the last taste, I guess, we got before franchising of the utter incompetence and sort of poison that seeped over from Riot NA, which is now thankfully in its own own little resident evil like dome and just before i lose the mind as well i do want to just say of course yes the neom deal well uh, but i mean i'm, I'm no. always kind of in two minds about that one whether i want to put that on lec or not because it was lec it was lec people that sort of pushed back against it even though it was their league operations that went in for it with permission from na so that that one's a bit more complex but certainly yes that is a grotesquely unethical sponsor that that'll be back by the way in, in, in oh well, it is years, that'll be back yeah, of course of course, sure. it is. of course it is at which point by the way too late we've got screenshots you can scrub those tweets all you want can't put that genie <laughs> back in the bottle. But what I will say is this. The reason why that other, that Bamtech deal is also egregious that they fucked it up is because when I'm thinking of the timeline of when this was, like you're saying, like 2015, 2016 era, that was when, if people remember, famously, one of the big esports sites was the Score Esports, right? And at the mm -hmm. time, their whole mission was go on the app. Remember, that was every advert at the events. They were sponsoring League of Legends. They were sponsoring CS Go events. A million times. Like, well, here's the key thing people won't know. Their whole business model at the time was the premise. It wasn't a terrible premise. It just didn't work as far as I know. Their premise was the reason why they want you on the app instead of a website is because on the app, there wasn't like an equivalent to ad block. So they said like, what will happen is when we get all the traffic to the app, we'll be able to sell like premium ads. And the idea is it'll be a way to like recreate what the internet used to be. Well, spoiler, that didn't come to fruition. We're not all on apps right now for everything in esports. So that was even a deal with like a limited time window and they just fucking dropped the ball. And now there is no deal like that. Like there's no 300 million deal coming through the door for something equivalent to that. Like the joke now is if someone really did just say tomorrow we've got a 50 million dollar deal you'd be like that's pretty good hey fucking mm -hmm. well done like they've actually they blew that one but but yeah. now we know that the largest deal ever in lcs history was 12 million a year which by the way is way more than the lcs is worth uh to be very clear yeah. in terms of what people get in the esports space from the tournament operations side for these sponsorships. That's a very big deal, by the way. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.